Hey, welcome to another episode of Three Conservative Gimps, where we give you the information you need to make an informed decision at the ballot box. So we've got a great show for you tonight. We've got a special guest. We have former congressman from Michigan, Thaddeus McConnor. He's going to be joining us uh, in a moment here. Uh, one quick uh, shout out. We want to give uh, Judy Mendenhall. We need to keep her in our, our, our thoughts and prayers. Uh, she's not doing too well, so Lloyd won't be joining us tonight. So keep her in your thoughts and uh, pray for a speedy recovery. So let's get the show on the road. Let's welcome all the way from the blue state of New York. It is Charles Galuski. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Art. Hey, folks in the chat. Yes. So, how's the weather there? Did you get some snow? Uh, yes. I might still even be snowing. All right. We're so far, we've to... got about three or four inches. Oh, wonderful. Well, we're supposed to get some snow tonight, uh, and hopefully the roads won't be too bad in the morning when I go to work. All righty, let's, uh, let's get going. Let's bring in our special guest all the way from Livonia, Michigan. It is Thaddeus McCotter. Welcome, welcome. Hey, how's everybody? Hey, Thaddeus. Well, we're, we're doing pretty good, pretty good. Uh, so we got a lot to talk about. We got some some crazy stuff happening. Uh, we've got the Colorado State Supreme Court deciding. Oh no, we can't have uh, Donald Trump on the ballot. He he he's caused an insurrection, which he hasn't even been charged with insurrection. And uh, so he hasn't even been convicted. So if he's, and then on top of that, a few days later, the uh, Secretary of State of the state of Maine decided we're not going to have Donald Trump on the ballot here as well. Uh, and then just recently, our uh, state supreme or. State State, Secretary of State here in Colorado decided, yes, Donald Trump will be on the primary ballot uh, this year. So a lot of weird stuff. And now we got news that the uh, uh, Supreme Court of the United States is going to take up the, uh, the hearing on uh, uh, the ballot questions. Can Trump be on the ballot? In, in those two states. And there have been several other states that have been contemplating uh, not putting uh, Trump on the ballot, including Michigan, which they smartly said, nah, we're not going to. So that's what's going on. Uh, so it, it should be an interesting uh, hearing. Uh, they're going to start hearings on February 8th. So... Your thoughts, Thaddeus? No, oh, it's ridiculous. The whole <laughs> thing is very ridiculous, and it belies the Democrats' argument that they're standing up for democracy at the very time they're making sure that it doesn't happen. Right. It's, un it's unfortunate. As, as Andy McCarthy has pointed out in National Review, and I've had a chance to talk to him a little bit about it, this is just a recipe for anarchy. Look, if Donald Trump has committed an insurrection, he should be charged in a federal court. There should be a jury trial or a trial by a judge, but there should be a legal proceeding, adversarial legal proceeding uh, with a determination one way or the other. Uh, that, would that would prevent states from unilaterally acting where there has been no judicial finding uh, by the federal right. courts. Uh, it would ensure that the institutions aren't viewed as being heavily politicized, which is a very grave danger here in the United States right. for both, uh, mm -hmm. for all people, people very worried about that. Mm -hmm. It would just make the most sense. Unfortunately, now the Supreme Court is going to have to weigh in and cite and state the obvious. There's been no mm -hmm. legal insurrection. The question of even whether the president of the United States or former president is even subject to that, whether the 
clause is self-executing or whether it needs an act of Congress to be executing. These are all issues that sound legal minds uh, can discuss. But the action of Colorado, the unilateral action of one single individual in Maine to be uh, the, the prosecutor, the judge, jury, and executioner of Donald mm-hmm. Trump is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous of what Colorado did. I'm glad to see that the state of Michigan, which is a Democrat majority uh, mm-hmm. state court, at least they were nominated, majority of them were nominated by Democrats. Right. But they, they made the right decision, I think, at the present time. And again, the interesting thing about Colorado that everybody forgets is this is not about uh, the general election. This is about the Republicans. Oper- the Republicans have every ability to nominate who they want to be president of the United States. So it's not even ripe for determination, even if Colorado could consider it. Right. He's not mm-hmm. nominated yet. So yeah. It's and, just ridiculous. And plus, you know, it's, it's, ridiculous. it's the last thing plus, that country needs right now. With something right like it's kind of ironic because yeah to be blunt i mean donald trump is probably the easiest republican they could defeat right now that's <laughs> so right it's ironically self-defeating of the democrats to do this so this is a case where this is a case where their paranoia is tra- is transcending their is trumping no pun intended uh their politics <laughs> and interests right and uh but if you notice the the uh Supreme Court justices, it was a split vote. It was four to three. The four justices are from Ivy League schools. And the other three judges are from University of Denver. So you got Ivy League, you know, eggheads deciding, oh, you know, hell with the Constitution. We don't like them. We're not going to have them on the primary ballot. Well, you're seeing what's coming out of the Ivy League these days in terms of anti-Semitic behavior, plagiarism, everything else. Mm-hmm. It's it's very unfortunate. But this again, I mean, we're seeing the institutions in the United States that have once been revered, have once been respected, are now self-immolating, <laughs> right, on a daily basis. And and the country is like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And the and the country is tired of chaos. Right. And they're tired of partisanship leading to more chaos. Uh, mm-hmm. That's that's the unfortunate aspect of where we are today. People are very, very tired of all this. Right. Mm-hmm. They're tired. They're tired of people putting their own selfish interests ahead of the interests of sanity and the interests of comedy here in mm-hmm. the United States. And both mm-hmm. sides are, are very complicit in it. Yep. Yep. Yes, they are, and uh, uh, and it's not like Trump is going to carry Colorado. I mean, he's not going to carry Colorado because Colorado, like California, is a blue state. So I don't know why the the Democrats are just so up in arms here in Colorado. And and the funny thing about it is the uh, the people that that brought this to the state Supreme Court are Republicans. Uh, one of them is a former uh, state senator, Norma Anderson, and a uh, Denver Post columnist, Krista Kafer, was also one of the uh, the plaintiffs in the suit. So Yeah, so they're virtue signaling, they're trying to get clicks, they're trying to get attention. It's again... Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're putting their own personal agenda ahead of the interests of the country. Right. And people are tired of it. And I'm not talking about something like, you know, the, that there's some ideological battle here or some philosophical battle. This is just selfishness. This is, mm-hmm. this is just, and it's just, people are just tired of it. They're tired of it. Do, right. do, we, do we, as you point out, do, 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 does Colorado really need to take Donald Trump off the ballot to defeat him? Right. I mean, mm-hmm. to lose Colorado, I, I, I tend to agree yeah. with you. I would not be going to Las Vegas and putting a bet on Donald Trump winning Colorado. Right. Yeah, like, wow, he might win all 10 electoral votes yeah. here. So, wow, so no. then why So why would the judges? They're virtue signaling and they're trying to get attention and maybe they'll get a mm-hmm. federal appointment from a Democratic president someday based upon this. Who mm-hmm. knows? But the end of the day, mm-hmm. the damage that they've done to the institutional standing of the Colorado Supreme Court, that they 
that they've done to the Democratic Party, although the Democrats don't quite recognize mm -hmm. it. Some do. Some recognize that this is not this is not inuring to their benefit at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And Republicans also can see that um, it's it's not doing anybody any good mm -hmm. in the long run for for justice to be considered partisan in Colorado any more than it is to be considered partisan anywhere else in the country. Right. And then and you to get, have a ministerial person in Maine unilaterally decide that they're going to determine who's fit to be president on the ballot for a primary right. or a general election is insane. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Yep. But she runs her primary. And so the left wing Democrats that will be predominant in her primary will love her for this. And so mm -hmm. her own personal interest comes ahead of the interest of the secretary of state's office in Maine, the interest of the country. And that's mm -hmm. where we're at. It's very dangerous, yep. Art, Charles, because it, we're, a, we're a revolutionary experiment in self-government. The first and last line of defense is the ability to govern oneself mm -hmm. and, and to understand what's important and what isn't and what you should and should not do, even if you can do it, does not mean you should do it. Yes. Right. Yes. And mm -hmm. so that's where we're at right now in this country. Indulgence over duty, man. Mm -hmm. Everything is incentivized to get you to stop self-governing and just enjoy and indulge yourself uh, without consequence. Right. And that's kind of, I think, and that leads to chaos. And here we are mm -hmm. today. So, yeah, it's it's getting to a point where, you know, people are, are going to not trust the electoral process because they're going to say, well, why should we vote? Because our my vote's not going to count. Because, you know, you got, you know, uh, Democrats who want to overturn the process or, or make it such a sham that people won't have trust in it. You've even got situations in Michigan which passed a constitutional ballot proposal here that allows private money to go into the coffers of publicly elected officials who count the ballots. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then that's what Wasn't Zuckerberg that the whole did. idea behind Zuckerberg's? That you know, is exactly it. And so, billion dollars. And so, Charles, they legalized it here in Michigan. The Democrats passed a ballot proposal to legalize it. And so you want to talk about... Now, could you imagine if Republicans had done what Zuckerberg did? Yeah. The oh Democrats' complaints in 2016 that it was stolen would have been off the charts. It would have been on steroids. Mm -hmm. So, so, but because they have done it, they think it's okay. Well, once the Republicans start doing it, then everybody will go, oh my God, this was not a good idea, was it? Especially if it mm -hmm. inures to their detriment. All of a sudden, they'll change the rules again. That's, that's what they do all the time. They change the rules until it comes back and bites them, and then they change them again until it comes mm -hmm. back and bites them. You know, lather, rinse, repeat. Right. But I mean, putting private money into the hands of people who are supposed to be objectively charged with counting the ballots and allowing them to determine where they will mail things and to enter into agreements and to be able to hire people that are suggested to them by private entities is insane. Right. It dilutes the public confidence in the objective fairness of elections. And I say that even if it were Republicans donating the money, I would object to that too. And they will. You watch. You get it. Right. And uh, here in Colorado, the, the Republican Party has uh, uh, sought to emoliate itself because you got two factions that don't want to work together to defeat the Democrats and they're in each other's throats. And uh, that's why we get crappy candidates that get beat by Democrats and we can't get enough, you know, campaign funds to candidates to help them win. They're doing the same thing in Michigan. The Michigan Republican Party's in, in, in a very bad state. There's internal right. division. There's contention. There's even talk of the internal argument going into the courts, which I think is ridiculous because you do not want outside entities determining the internal operations of the Republican Party any more than the Democrats would. Right. So we're seeing people who, again, can't can't put their own personal agendas uh, step aside from them and let the let the best interests of the party, let the best interests of the state, best let the best interests of the country uh, prevail. 
Hmm. They, they care more about their own personal situation than they do about the situation of the, of the local communities, of the local state, of, of the part of the country. And that's just where we are. No one's going to take one for the team, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that brings up another point. Uh, a couple of your Colorado friends here have decided not to seek re-election. Ken Buck is not seeking re-election. And Doug Lamborn just the other day uh, announced he's not going to seek re-election. And uh, Bobert is switching districts. She's going from the third district to the fourth district, which is even redder than her uh, previous. Is that, is, that, is that Doug or is that Buck? That's Four. Buck. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that makes sense. Look, she she wants to have a safe seat. She's uh, very conservative. It makes sense. She won the primaries. All she's got to win. She's had difficulties, at least in terms of her public relations recently, right. shall we say. And so for her running in a marginal seat, it's a whole lot of work. It's very difficult. And so she proved much prefer to be in a safe seat. I was a targeted marginal seat myself for the 10 years I was there. So I can understand it. I would never have moved. In fact, it's ironic. If you claim to be a conservative, what she's doing is undermining the very constitutional concept of election by district and representing the community right. in terms as if every congressional seat is the same. And what does it matter? That's not the case. That's not how the Constitution designed it. That's not the way that uh, it's not the way I would think that a conservative will go about doing their business. But uh, that's up for the people of the fourth district now to determine. Right. And she only won by 500 votes in her last election. Which is why she wants to get into the into the safe seat. Mm -hmm. And she's complaining that Hollywood elites are uh, pouring money into her district. And, and well, I guess I guess they can't pour money into the other one, huh? <laughs> I did not <laughs> was unaware of that that there was some kind of magnet drawing Hollywood money well, only into you, her own. You don't see a lot of Hollywood elites uh, uh, living in like I don't know Yuma, Colorado. No, they kind of like it in Aspen, up in that area. In the final analysis, look, we know what she's doing. She's trying to blame it on Hollywood elites. She's pursuing right. what she thinks is best for her. And it doesn't matter whether the Hollywood guys were throwing the money in. If the DCCC was throwing the money in. She's tired of running in a competitive race, and she wants a safe seat where all she has to do is win the primary. Right. I just wish she'd be honest about it. Right. And, uh, and we've got some pretty strong candidates in the fourth CD, a couple of people that I know, like Jerry Sonnenberg, he's a former state rep and state senator. I got to meet him when I ran for office back in 2010 and 2012. And uh, he's a pretty uh, solid conservative in his district. And he's a, a rancher up in Sterling, Colorado. So, uh, uh, he might be a tough one to beat if he gets enough funding. Uh, it all depends on how how it all plays out in that district. What's going to happen in her old district? Uh, and that is another question. We don't. I don't know who was uh, the Republican because, that's. Going. See, that's the big issue, isn't it? Yeah. You're, you know, you got a nine seat majority or, or it's kind of even thinner. And then she's going to abandon a contested competitive seat. Right. And so so our best candidate would be the incumbent in the competitive seat. She's decided she wants something a little greener pasture. So she's going to go right. to the fourth district, which mm -hmm. leaves her district uh, very vulnerable to be taken over by the Democrats. Right. Uh, which could help endanger uh, the slim Republican majority. Uh, right. But, you know, but hey, Hollywood money. Hey, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who cares about yeah. the majority when you can get a safe seat? Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. And the eighth CD, which is the newest, uh, that candidate won by a, a slim margin because the dumb Republicans here decide the, uh, the one faction didn't like the candidate, the Republican candidate decided, hey, we're going to back the Libertarian. Yeah, let's split the vote and uh, let the Democrat win with uh, uh, 50% or 
fifty point zero one percent. And and I'm, I'm guessing the Republican that endorsed the Libertarian wants to run again. Uh, who, no, there's a businessman that is running in for uh, Congress in that that so district. It's, so it's even worse than he just did it out of spite. Really. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wonderful. We have an organization called Rocky Mountain Gun Owners, and uh, the guy that used to run it, he was just a huge firebrand where he just wanted solid conservatives that are anti-abortionists to run in all the districts rather than trying to get the best candidates to run in those districts. Uh, I swear these people, they don't understand that the uh, the power lies within the state assembly. The more R's there are, then D's gets to control all the committee assignments and all the bills that get to go through. So it, it's like, well, I don't like this guy. I don't like that guy. So there, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. And it's like, ah, drives me crazy. That's rather selfish of them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because if you really cared about what you claim to care about, you'd do everything you can to protect it, even if right. you're compromising with people to protect it. Mm -hmm. And facilitating the way to do it, even if it may not be the most immediate way. Right. Like you have to be an adult, man. You can't always mm -hmm. get what you want, man. But you better get what you need, or you're going to get run over by the Democrats. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, there are several other Republicans uh, throughout the country that are not seeking re-election because they're just tired of the crap that's going on. So yeah. a lot of a lot of them in safe seats, but a lot of them are in them contested seats. Right. And they've just decided that it's just it's just too chaotic and just too ugly. Mm hmm. Yep. I can and, understand. <clears throat> yep. So, uh, it's, you know, what's funny here in Colorado, there's a couple of Democrats that have either resigned after one year into their term or they're going to not seek re-election because of the vitriol that's going on here at the state capitol because we got some idiot from Denver who's a, a representative who is a pro-Palestinian supporter. And you got the Jewish faction of the, the Democrat wing. They're all up in arms because you know, we got our own Rashida Tlaib here in Colorado. And and, uh, and, and one, of, one of the Democrats got censured because of her anti-Semitic remarks in the Capitol chambers. Which is, and, and like in Michigan, you got Rashida Tlaib censured from Congress. Who, See, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very wary about congressional censure over public statements, over what a member says. I think that's for them and their constituents to hash out what's acceptable and right. what's not. So, they mm -hmm. can throw, so you can either be reelected or not because you're supposed to speak for the district. Now, Rashida Tlaib's my member of Congress. Obviously, we don't agree on anything. <laughs> right. Much. But I agree with her right to have her free speech. I agree with her right to put forward her position. And mm -hmm. so when Congress can censor you over one thing or another, unless it's patently racist, and even then, that's between the constituents first and foremost with the individual, mm -hmm. because what what you consider acceptable, uh, something acceptable to talk about. Let's say I deny climate change. Right. And all of a sudden, a Democratic House, U.S. House decides you can't deny climate change. You're killing people. We're right. going to censor you because of your political mm -hmm. position on climate change right. and your misinformation and disinformation. And you could just you could see where this is going to go. Right. Mm -hmm. The silencing of one's political opponents. Now, the left loves to parse and to thin down your constitutional right, God given right to free speech. They can't stand mm -hmm. it because their, their policies are terrible. 
And when you point out the truth about their horrible policies and their horrible positions and their horrible ideology, uh, they don't seem to like it very much. So they try no. to silence you. But they will use any tool that is possible. So while we may like the fact that they have censured somebody like Rashida Tlaib or censured somebody like that representative in Colorado, once once you start this, eventually what goes around comes around, man. And everybody's tired of what's going around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except yep. for the people who start, who, who use it late, who, you, who last use it, seem to think it's okay until it comes back for them. But everybody right. else is just tired of it. You know, I can live with people having a political opinion I disagree with. Mm -hmm. I'm content with that. Yeah. And I think the, the last, well, the person that got censured before this would be Paul Gosard of Arizona because of a stupid cartoon they posted in uh, on social media. But before that, you'd have to go all the way back to the Civil War when the last time somebody was sent you. Yeah, it's, but it's going to get worse and they're going to, yeah. it's, it's going to get worse and it's going to impede the ability for people to talk about things. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you can't talk about things, no matter how unpleasant they may be, it's just going to get worse. Things fester. Right. And things boil over and things become far worse than they would have been had you been able to talk it out and get it out of mm -hmm. your system and then move forward. Mm hmm. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> well, and I, what worries me is how the left have gotten so unhinged that they're so afraid of Donald Trump. Say he happens to win the election. I'm worried that some lunatic is going to succeed in taking care of them. what they're going to do is you'll probably see akin to what they did in 2016. You'll also see some of what you saw in 2020 uh, with some of the, some of the public protests and you'll continue right. to see more of that uh, civil disobedience right. all because they started to believe their own paranoid and dependent uh, narratives. Mm -hmm. So when all you have to offer the American people is paranoia and dependence so that you can accomplish your aims, uh, eventually you start to believe it yourself right if you look right. at if you look at what the left is doing through the administrative state the in, the impact upon individual freedom the impact upon liberty the politicate politicization of justice the weaponization of the tools surveillance powers and the department of justice the fbi and others you can realize that what the democrats claim it could be done by donald trump to democracy they're actually already busy doing it themselves what the right. left does is the left projects its sin upon its victims. Right. And that's how they sleep at night. And that's how they justify it to themselves. Mm -hmm. There's nothing well, to do with it. Yeah, but, they, but, they, but everything they accuse you of doing, they're busy doing themselves. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just worried that somebody might try to, and I, the hell with YouTube, uh, if someone tries to assassinate uh, Donald Trump. Because if they succeed, what's going to happen is it's just going to ignite. Uh, I mean, I, I think civil war could uh, break out because I think you're going to have people on both sides that are just going it, to, it's either going to fall apart or people are just going to rise up and say, how dare you? That person was elected and you didn't like him, so you got to go kill the guy? Come on. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Donald Trump, 78, he's, he's in fine fettle, he's in fine health, he's well protected. Right. Um, so is Joe Biden, and so is mm -hmm. Mr. Obama, and so is well, I believe every former president. So, look, in fact, we've seen recently uh, Gabrielle Giffords and others and members right. of Congress that have been attacked mm -hmm. and have been harmed. Uh, she comes to mind because I, I served with her. She right. just a, she's a wonderful person. And it should never happen to anybody, but somebody like that, it was just so, yeah. so a horrible tragedy. But 
it's always it's always something. Look, I remember being in Congress, getting death threats and being told right. they were offering. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was told that uh, someone was offering money if they would kill me. And I think there were some other members that they were offering too. And I said, uh, well, "How much are they offering people to kill me?" Yeah. You know, I'm <laughs> Irish. I want to know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they said like, he's offering thousand. No, I'm so he, cheap. He said, "I'm offering four thousand. They're offering four thousand dollars to kill you." And I was oh. like, "Very." I was very upset. Four thousand dollars seems yeah. relatively low. Yeah. Uh, I mean, back then, I mean, granted, there's a little more purchasing power you know, 15 years ago, but still, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was, I was thinking at least five grand to kill me. Yeah, there you I go. Was thinking, yeah, or or yeah. or. If you, you know, because this wasn't like it was some ideological thing. It wasn't like, you know, I was evil and he was going to erase me or something. It had, it was just about as a monetary transaction. So he actually mm -hmm. could put a dollar figure on how, how bad he wanted me out of Congress. And yeah. I was like, only 4000 bucks to kill me. I thought I was doing a better job. I thought at least, <laughs> again, at least five grand. Yeah. Me. Mm -hmm. So so I, I worked even harder. Okay. So what are the prospects for the Republicans in Michigan? I think a, a large part of it's going to be ultimately when we determine who the nominee is for both parties. Right. Otherwise, right. It's, it's very difficult to say. Because I think that that's going to have more influence than even than it ordinarily does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you get a uh, sense of it. we both know that the public is not happy with a rematch of Biden and Trump. Right. I think they they can't. I think they've had their fill of both of them, actually. Although the right. partisans have not. So it'll be very interesting to see how the independents decide they're going to vote because they can't stand either one of them. Well, you got RFK Jr. running. That could be a key factor. I, mean, I don't know. I think the Democrats have learned from the Ralph Nader uh, gambit right. and the Jill Stein gambit with the Green parties. Uh, their their internal discipline is far harder. I think the Republicans have a greater chance of bleeding people this election. Right. Anti Trump, the never Trumpers, and those people, mm -hmm. even if they are Republican anymore. Uh, certainly, Republican leaning independents are far more likely to go to an RFK than I think Democratic leaning independents, largely because the Democrats, the fear of Trump makes it makes them far more disciplined in terms of voting for Biden. They will mm -hmm. grit their teeth and vote for Biden because of Trump. Interesting. Interesting. I don't think the never Trumpers are going to buy are going to bite their teeth and vote for Trump under any circumstance. Yeah. Well, you got a couple conservative talk show hosts here in Colorado the have stated they're not going to vote for Donald Trump. Uh, one's a libertarian and one is an well, independent. But he's not conservative. He's a libertarian. Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> well, you know, but he voted for Trump in 16, mm -hmm. uh, and he voted for him in 20. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, he just, uh, he's just not going to vote for him. He's going to vote for either the libertarian or if, I don't know, if Nikki Haley happens to win the primary, he, he sees himself voting for someone like Nikki Haley. So. Well, uh, I don't think, I think whatever one thinks of January 6th, uh, I think that that has taken a toll on a lot of people's support for Trump. Because right. even if they don't think it rose to the level of an insurrection, they certainly think it was stupid, selfish, and a blunder, and it cost us two seats in Georgia in the U.S. Right. And right. so a lot of people are very upset about that. Mm -hmm. uh, they're upset about the way he handled the aftermath of that, running around, right. concerned, talking about himself as opposed to trying to fix things while we could in the right. special election, uh, mm -hmm. running around not laying the groundwork anywhere else for 20 22 or 2024 
because as I said, the, the constitutional changes here in Michigan on the voting laws and things like that were mirrored in a lot of other states. There's been a lot of mechanical work done by the Democrats in terms of getting out the vote, in terms of ballot harvesting and others in other states, mm -hmm. marginal swing states. The, the 2022 elections were not beneficial to Republicans. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen that, uh, that that type of chaos and that type of inattention to the very details you need uh, on the mechanical end to get elected uh, has put uh, has, has cast doubts in a lot of people's minds who voted for Trump in 2016 and 2020. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole lot of other reasons other than the fact that uh, the fact that the left despises Donald Trump is probably his greatest asset in terms of getting the Republicans to vote for him mm -hmm. in the primary. Right. Because it proves it you're hated by all the right people sometimes is, is a critical factor in winning a primary. Right. Mm -hmm. As opposed to being loved by all the, by all the wrong ones too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and what gets me are these Republicans that are whining about ballot harvesting. Hey, maybe we ought to start ballot harvest, you and know, we will. We will. And, and, and that's what we, we got to do here. And, and especially here in Colorado and, elsewhere that have those kind of uh, rules where uh, ballot harvesting is allowed. Uh, here in Colorado, it's supposed to be illegal, but it still happens. We have to operate within the law and whatever the law is, where whatever state you're in, whatever municipality you're in, you have to follow it, but you mm -hmm. have to, but that does not mean you should not engage in it as, as, as diligently and as, with as much dedication and devotion as you possibly can. And that's right. why the failure of the parties in places like Michigan, the failures of the party in places like Colorado are so, uh, are so damaging because they're the very people at the grassroots level that are supposed to be working on this in conjunction with the national parties. They're the first line of defense uh, to making sure the swing states don't go from purple to blue. Right. They actually go from purple to red. So we're not seeing that. We, we're not witnessing any of that. And I think a lot of Republicans uh, are very upset by this, and they're very upset by the role that Donald Trump has played in this, or absence of a role in right. helping to ameliorate some of these problems, or at least address them, mm -hmm. instead of just complaining that the election is rigged. Because, you know, okay, if they if they rigged the election in 2016, you won. They rigged the election again in 2020. This time you lost. Uh, they're rigging it again. So what's different this time? How do we That's know true. you're going to win this time? Mm -hmm. Right. And then, but again, you would be able to say, look, we've done X, Y, and Z in these swing states. The parties are strong. We have this. We had a good election in 2022. Things are moving up. None of that's really happened, has it? Right. We, we squeaked out the, the one thing we needed the most uh, in 2022 was a Republican majority in the House, and we barely got that. Right. And yeah. Everywhere and else we got swamped. Right. And then you had, uh, the squabble with the McCarthy, he got thrown out. Now he's taken his glove and gone home. And well, that was a, that was a big factor in the 2022 because that all happened prior, right prior to the election. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, these and types of things don't help. I, I, I mean, 2023, they happened prior to the 2023 midterm elections in places uh, in some of these states where we got swamped again. Mm -hmm. So in the 2023 election, this type of dysfunction and chaos amongst House Republicans was a factor in some of these losing a lot of the statewide seats in the states that have elections in the odd years. Mm -hmm. So, again, and, and state Supreme Courts as well. Right. So mm -hmm. we lost the Colorado or Wisconsin state Supreme Court race. So they're going to go redistrict Colorado, which will have a detrimental impact upon the House majority. Right. So these types of things, none, no one is really doing much about these types of very basic bread and butter, meat and potatoes, mechanical operations that are supposed to be being done by the RNC, the NRC, right. the, the local parties. Instead, we're discussing how many, you know, how many leftists can dance on the head of a pin. Uh, and as we stick it into Nikki Haley or, or DeSantis and call them rhinos. But nobody's really doing anything about the things that matter. Right. To winning in right. 2024. Mm -hmm. Well, here in Colorado in the last 50 years, we've only had one Republican governor who had uh, 
two terms, and he did put some conservatives on the Supreme Court, but ever since then, all the Democrats, those Republicans either retired or uh, decided not to be uh, on the Supreme State Supreme Court, got replaced with Democrats. And uh, here in Colorado, we have a retention process, which uh, now I, I just find pointless because the person that gets replaced is just going to be replaced with another Democrat. So it's just, so what's the point of uh, not retaining a state uh, Supreme Court justice, which when that person's going to be replaced with another Democrat, it's just not going to be any change at all. You got to win a governor's race. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. And, and we got oh, such a dysfunctional uh, Republican Party. Now the Republican Party here in Colorado has 24% here in Colorado, where the Democrats are, I guess, slightly over 30%. And then the rest are unaffiliates. I mean, they take up like, uh, forty percent of the the uh, the voters are unaffiliates, and it's like, it never used to be like that. It used to be a third, a third w with the Republicans slightly ahead the Democrats. And now, uh, with the the infighting, a bunch of Republicans are saying, "Screw it, I'm a, an unaffiliate now. I don't want to." mess with the party, so I'll vote for whoever I want, you know? Well, they, they can do that anyways. Yeah. Uh, that's but I, I know what you're saying. Party registration's down. It, it's, it's a drag. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to see some of that in Michigan, too. Also, with Michigan, it's an older community. We're seeing a lot of Republicans leaving the state to retire in warmer climes. Right. And mm -hmm. that's part of what's been going on here. It's so that also leads to, to more Democratic, but it also leads to some Republican successes, depending on where they move to. Mm -hmm. But in the mm -hmm. final analysis, look, if you put forward a winning message and something people would like and it's a palpable benefit to them, they'll vote for it. Right. So life is very mm -hmm. simple. <clears throat> and, so, right. and if they don't like it, they won't vote for it. Americans mm -hmm. remain a very practical people. Right. And I, and I think, you know, I mean, Republicans... I remember back in the 80s, uh, there, was, there was a thing called the, the Bookman. I think it was put out by Hillsdale College. And one of the, it was a, a little conservative quarterly that they would send to people for free. And the headline, this is, it said, it was a whole, our whole magazine, the topic was America's decline. Right. It came out in 1984. Interesting. During the peak of Ronald Reagan, <coughs> as the Soviet Union was about ready to go on the ash can of history, mm -hmm. Republicans tend to focus on the negative so often. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, our greatest president of my lifetime was a Republican named Ronald Reagan, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> who was noted for his optimism and faith in the American people. Right, right. So right. Uh, that's where we need to go, people. It's, it's not mm -hmm. that hard. And so mm -hmm. when, when Republicans running around to start talking about how bad things are, how kids are horrible, and how these low information voters, why would you insult anyone you want to vote for you? Right. That's true. That's would, you, true. would you walk down the street going, hey, I'd like to borrow $5 from you, you total idiot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think you want to do that. No. So Republicans got, so there has to be kind of a change of mindset here on Republicans, and mm -hmm. I don't think to be blunt, I don't think Donald Trump's retaliation tour is actually, you know, his revenge tour is actually something that a whole lot of Americans are really going to respond to. Right. Mm -hmm. We're an aspirational, inspirational people. We're not, we're not a vengeful people. Mm -hmm. you know, I will be your tool of retribution, I think Trump promised. I'm like, that's not what I want to promise. It's not a president. I want a promise I want from a president. Right. <laughs> I don't elect you to serve as my retribution here, Tiger. Right. 
Yeah, I, know, just I want, could be on the list. <laughs> right. Yeah, I just yeah. want a president that will give us a good economy and a, a stable planet that's not war. Protect, protect the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and, and domestic, too. provide for the common defense, mm -hmm. and, and allow the free market to run. Mm -hmm. And let, it, let, let Americans be Americans. Let us pursue mm -hmm. our happiness and get out of the way. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people appeal to that. I think a whole lot of what the Democrats are doing, they're getting away with because because of the because people have made up their mind about Trump. And I think they view Trump as a hall pass to engage in all types of chaotic, injurious public policy. Right. And and the minute Trump's gone, people are going to go, OK, we're done with you now. Mm -hmm. But it's true. I think that's I, I really think that that's that's what they're doing. And and look, I, look if Trump's a Republican nominee, I'll vote for him. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm a Republican. OK, if the party says, you know, I'm not going to take my ball and go home because the stakes right. are too high. Mm -hmm. and, and even in, in whatever you think about Donald Trump, if nothing else, at least stop the insanity that's coming out of Washington, D.C. right now. That's true. It's true. And, and that's about all I expect from him anyways. Mm -hmm. He's never shown a real capacity to desire to, to govern or to go into the machinations of government to really dismantle the administrative straight or hamstring it. To the to the public again, right? The public actually controls it. But anyways, but that's what I'm doing because I practice what I preach. It may not be who I want to be the nominee, but I will support the Republican nominee, whoever it is. And in fact, right. that's something even Donald Trump himself has not said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's remember? true. That's... Remember? Yep. Yeah. Well, he's there are certain people he couldn't endorse. It's like really, really. You're telling me. You're telling me Ron DeSantis would be a worse president than Joe Biden. If that's your view of the situation, I don't want you to be my nominee. You're an idiot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts about uh, Vivek uh, Ramaswamy? I think it's, I think Republicans, I think it's insane that Republicans, there's a guy you haven't heard of, what, four months ago that you think should be the leader of the free world and have his finger on a nuclear button, all because he says the nice things that you read on a bumper sticker or here on, on, uh, Tucker Carlson show. This is stupid. Uh -huh. This is not an entry level job for God's sake. No. I want to know what you've done, what you can do and what you're willing to do. And I want to have a track record to look at. Right. So, so, so I don't know where he came from. I don't know why he gets all this attention. Is there the mm -hmm. possibility he could be a plant in the race to do the things to people like Nikki Haley or DeSantis that Trump won't do because he won't enter the debates. Could right. he be a stalking horse for Trump? I tend to think he is. He's the one candidate Trump never attacks, isn't he? Interesting, interesting. Right. And uh, hmm, never thought of it that way. Trump uh, wakes up and attacks his shoelaces just for sport. Okay. <laughs> yep. Right? So this is mm -hmm. the one guy that's actually running to get rid of Donald Trump. That he, did, oh, he doesn't have a problem with you. He has a problem with anybody who tries to take something he wants from him. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, so why not buy that? Yeah. Huh? And it starts uh, to make sense, doesn't it? Yeah. From what I understand, he was a CEO of a biotech company. So. Oh yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a, mm -hmm. a Republican mindset. You know, entrepreneur for Republicans is like community organizer for Democrats. Yeah. I don't really know well, what it means, but it sounds okay. Sure. Yeah. Why not? What could go well, on? at least he wasn't head of a call center. We don't know what <laughs> the exact details are of, of anything. I don't, anyways. Right. Um, this isn't mm -hmm. like uh, this isn't like somebody who ran Apple, <laughs> right? Or even Trump right. Enterprises. Again, mm -hmm. entrepreneur is our version of community organizer. I don't quite know right. what it means, but it sounds okay. Sure. Why not? What could mm -hmm. go wrong? <laughs> so uh so are there any uh dingles and conyards still in office there uh, there's Michigan? debbie dingle uh john dingle's uh -huh. uh, widow is in congress um, i always got along with all the dingles they, they've always been relatively practical people and you see right. they weren't leftists so you could always you could always work with them because you always okay. 
you understood where they were, they understood where you were. If it was common ground, you could find the common ground because you both agreed America is a great country and you want to figure out how to make it better. Right. And although we differed on it, sometimes we didn't. So I always got along with them. John, uh, John uh, is no longer, is no longer. There's no oh, okay. Darkness, so I think John passed away. Um, yeah, wasn't it his son? Them, I, I know John Dingle did. So, uh huh. But anyways, no. I mean, uh, Michigan. What Michigan did is Michigan went to a a redistricting commission, mm -hmm. and they and the media loved it because uh, targeted races, competitive races, they make more money by buying ads and all that. So that's how they viewed it. What's going to happen is Michigan right. will have no long term stability in an institution that values length of service in terms of committee assignments. <laughs> <laughs> Which means Michigan right, just that's true. That's screwed itself out of power in Washington, and nobody seems to care. Which is fine. It's right. Not my problem anymore. Mm -hmm. I just live here. You know. <laughs> so no one we're sending to Congress is ever going to be around long enough to actually hold a committee gavel, or actually exercise that's real true. influence. They're certainly never going to be in House leadership. Right. Because they'll be too busy trying to hold on to a competitive seat. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that. Yep. Oh, by the way, they also made sure that we have fewer African Americans in Congress, fewer African Americans in the state legislature, thanks to this redistricting commission the Democrats wanted. Wow. Did, Did you imagine know. Republicans had passed something like this and reduced the number of African Americans in the state legislature and in Congress? Hmm. The only African American in Congress from Michigan is Republican John James. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Which is a oh. retrogression. Right. Right. And we've seen the same thing at the state at the state level. But oh. the Democrats wanted it. Obama and Holder put it on the ballot, helped put it on the ballot and, and promoted it. The Democrats right. all wanted it, which if I was an African-American, that would prove Malcolm X's theory. The most dangerous ones are the liberals who claim to be your friend. Right. Mm -hmm. The wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. So how are things in Oakland County? Is that the... Uh... Is it a blue county or it's red? Relative or county? Blue. It's relatively yeah. blue. Yeah. Uh, the, the big counties in Michigan now that are red are Livingston County, which is, mm -hmm. and Macomb County. Okay. You know that, Art. Yeah. So Macomb and Livingston. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I'm, okay. Western Wayne used to be uh, relatively conservative, but it's not anymore. Right. It's blue. Mm -hmm. And, um, Oakland County, especially Southern Oakland County, is very blue. Right. Yeah. As you get closer to Detroit, it, yeah. Yeah. As you get up further towards Genesee, ironically, it comes more conservative, but right. not so, but not uh, not enough. Right. So and, old, you used to have to start knocking down. Uh, interestingly, it's um, and and I got I got to run at eight, but um, I'll, I'll leave okay. you with I'll leave you with this is. Ballot harvesting has done a lot to destroy uh, about the power base of, of African Americans. Because right. when you think about it, we grew up with Coleman Young, powerful African American leader, the first black mayor of Detroit. And, right. and if you got on the wrong side of him, he would not turn out that vote. So he was able to get a lot of federal funding from both Republicans and Democratic administrations. Uh, because of the fear that he would not have his machine turn out voters on election day. He right. did the same thing with the governor's races too. But now with ballot harvesting, doesn't matter. Right. Because the, the big money guys are going to hire people, work with the secretary of state, send them, you know, cut a, cut a deal, throw them grants. They don't need the African-American power base to turn out the inner cities anymore. And right. a large, and we saw that with the redistricting commission that they put forward, because one of the reasons it was put forward was because African Americans would work with Republicans to protect their seats. That's why right. there was never any retrogression when Republicans drew the lines in Michigan. Mm. Okay. And so yeah. the Democrats, what happened was the Democrats, through the ballot harvesting and the redistricting commission, have actually have absolutely decimated the black power structure here in Michigan. And they're going to do it throughout the rest of the country. Right. Right, right. Careful what you vote uh, for. Here in Colorado, we had a change in our redistricting. Uh, now they've had we have a commission now that's made up of one third unaffiliate, one third Republican, one third Democrat, 
And guess how it turned out? Well, you know, the unaffiliates tend to lean left. So the Democrats still got their maps that they wanted. Maybe not all of what they wanted, but how, they... How did the unaffiliates get there? Uh, well, no, what probably selected by Democrats that were probably former Democrats that... Uh, uh, the, yeah, the our, 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 our nonpartisan redistricting committee was chaired by a Bernie Sanders guy. Right. Oops. Mm. Whoops. How'd that yeah. happen? Oh, whoops. <laughs> Go figure. All right, Thaddeus. Uh, it's uh, top of the hour, and uh, looks like you need to, to go. Uh, you need have to go. a. <laughs> People have been saying that for years. <laughs> My best to Judy and, and Lloyd. I'm sorry to hear about that. Yeah. But she's not doing well. Yeah. So, yeah, she just had a bad night, didn't sleep well. So if she's not sleeping well, Lloyd's not sleeping well. Right. So, uh, I hear you. I hear you. so you have a great evening and uh, don't be a stranger. We'll have you back uh, soon. And uh, all right. Charles. Talk to you later. Charles. Good night. Good night, guys. Bye. 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 The end the stream.